in this whole CDC, CBC, and THC conversation that happens. And I thought that you would be great to have come in and talk about the oils in Europe and what you do to help assist people who need these kind of uh, unsigned medicine. So ladies and gentlemen, here in the studio with us, this is Catherine Seal. I want to say the name of your organization, but I don't want to mess up something real slowly. AWB Association, that word, is that the name of the company? That's just the name of the website. And did you have trouble with the initials? Or like, <laughs> uh, well, I, I got to go through this. Right, everybody. Right. I think it's through. I don't know what you were doing before we started the show, but you were alive, you were excited, you were happy. I know, I know, I know. We're talking about patients, we're talking about business, where's the money at, what's going on in the state. I do want to dive back just a second and just address that. That'd be the group. Um, I, I've been speaking about medical marijuana and business development in this area for cultivators, processors, and retail dispensary owners all over the country for four years. And I was on a business side when I first came into this, and then I became a patient advocate, mm-hmm. and I'm also a patient, and my family, family members as well. But that'd be the group. I thought, you know, I don't work with you in Florida because we're just so slow. So slow coming to this market, right? I thought, well, maybe somebody wants to talk about it. So I started the Florida Cannabis Entrepreneurs and Investors Meetup Group. Mm-hmm. I thought, you know, I was so excited when there were 20 people in this group and that wanted to meet every month and talk about wow. this topic, whatever they want to talk about. And now, a year, a little over a year, we have over 1,300 members. Wow. That is really people want to talk. Wow. They have nowhere to go. Mm-hmm. They want to ask these important questions. So to your point, thank you. Wow. Wow. And thank you so much for your patience because you sat through like the first half of the show and you were just so patient. So, I mean, we thank you for that. <laughs> 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 Asking, ma'am. Okay. Did you ask Miss G the same question? Yes, I screened everyone the exact same way. Okay, good. Because I've been calling for like five or six years, and it's like I explained the everlasting. 
you guys don't screen every week. You, you screen periodically. Well, since I've been here, which I am kind of new, maybe about three months, when I'm here, I screen and I ask because we have to get the temperament of the caller. And I need to know what you would like to speak with them about because they also put people on depending on the topic that they're on, if it relates or doesn't relate. Okay, and I did say I would like to speak about medical marijuana. Yes, and I'm saying in general, what would you like to say about uh, medical marijuana so I can let the team know every cafe? Okay, um, well, you know, I, I find it interesting that the people are actually surprised that the industry has gone to a monopoly, monopoly, and if they had, you know, paid more attention to the bill that they they voted for, they they may have not had to predict these things, but may have already known them. And that's one point. Is that enough? Thank you. 
are not the pituitary gland, but the pineal gland and, and things that happens in our body. And after Jerome usually hang up, we get a lot of people throughout the week who talk about how good it was to hear what that young man had to say. And so, welcome back, Jerome. We are talking about marijuana, medical marijuana, and all the subtopics that fall under that. You've been listening now for about 45 minutes, and what are you thinking, and what are you hearing, and how are you feeling? Uh, I mean, I enjoy what I'm hearing. Got a lot of true information out there about. Uh, hey, Rome, you got kind of a bad. Rome, you got kind of a bad connection. Could you just hang or close your window? Maybe that's air. I know you might be driving. What, what about now? Uh, now you better now? Yeah, that's that's perfect. Thank you. Yeah, get off the air. Uh, uh, I hear um, I hear some good information about it. But a couple things I want to say before I start going into the cellular part of it is that. Is 32, around 32 to 3,600 medical marijuana dispensaries in the United States, and only 50 are owned by black people. That's one issue that we need to look into. And another thing, when we pick up Oakland, what Oakland done, they, have a, they started a program called the Equity Program. And the Equity Program, when they went into heavy drug areas where black people were uh, convicted of selling marijuana and giving them opportunities to get into the marijuana business from either distribution, uh, um, delivery service, or cultivation service. So they're trying to help out the community to get in for us on the business side of it as well. So I want to give Oakland a big shout out for that, doing that. Now, are you guys still here? Yeah, we're here. We're here. We just turn off our mics so we can hear you clearly. Uh, uh, okay, so now on a cellular level, medical marijuana or oils or whatever you want to use, they're, they're better than pharmaceutical companies if you get it or any, like you were saying, but they still are not to, to fix the problem, the underlying issue. Like the lady said, she's having glaucoma. Glaucoma is the eye trying to correct itself, heal itself, but because she's not, her body's not getting enough nutrients and she's probably somewhere getting too much sugar in her diet and it's robbing the body for nutrients that it gets stuck. That the eye, the body will stiffen itself, we call it like a scab, to heal itself. So the eye is basically like, like a scab, and it's stuck in its one position because it's not getting the proper nutrients to heal itself. So, I want people to understand that. So you say that's, that's, like, that's a, a, a thing from sugar? From too much sugar and yeah. not enough what? Yes. Uh, eating too much sugar and not getting enough nutrients in the body, not eating the proper food. Jerome, this is this is Sam. Uh, like I, I, I completely agree with you that uh, that you need to, to go after the, the root problem and not keep dealing with the symptoms and try to get those because that's essentially what the pharmaceutical company does because there's so much money to be made, exactly. right? Exactly. But but don't you don't you think though when you've got the three stages, right? You got primary, secondary, and tertiary, and when it gets to tertiary, it's chronic and there's the, your body is not going to replenish itself. Don't you think then it would be at least prudent to start uh, allowing people to use the medical mirror or at least pushing them to, to use it because it could be beneficial. Um, it could be beneficial. It's temporary because if you, if you go on my Facebook page, uh, Jerome Kyle Lawrence, I have a client who has, who has MS, has been in a wheelchair for four years. I put a video of yesterday he's been working with for three months. He's, um, he's standing up now on his own. And that just regenerates his changing this guy, you know, on a proper mm -hmm. food bed so the body can reheal itself. The body reheals itself. Fibrom people have fibromyalgia. That is calcium built up inside your muscle system. That means you're losing calcium, it's coming out of your teeth and your bones. So now you need to, to get some K2, some magnesium, some phosphor, so you can put the uh, magnesium back, I mean the calcium back where it needs to put where it belongs, back into your bones and your teeth. So it does have information that is being not communicated to the people. So the marijuana, the medical marijuana can help you through this process as you're getting the proper information to heal yourself. Nutrition. You, you, you see it more, more as a supplement, not necessarily the panacea and all. Exactly. All right. Exactly. Like with cancer patients, it slows down. Cancer like the growth, it grows fast. So the marijuana is like, you know, you get high, you slow down, you don't want to do nothing. It slows down the movement of the cell. So everything about... Okay. Okay. Jamal? Yeah. yeah, I had a question for Rome and for um, Catherine. And, you know, uh, my girlfriend is big on this. Um, like you mentioned where you get the marijuana from because I mean, maybe just me I, it's possibly a little conspiracy theory or just that I'm a young black man in America but I have a feeling the government 
is going to try to inject something into medical marijuana. I, I maybe some way I see some how some of the kids act nowadays. The ma- the marijuana that is out now is not the marijuana that was in the sixties and seventies. I wonder if you guys could address that because I, I mean I look at what's going on especially with these different things like the vaccines with um, medicines for ADHD, and I just don't trust. Like I'm not a big smoker really ever. I tried back in the day, but I don't think I would ever trust buying my drugs from the government. So uh, you're, but you're, are you buying from the government? Are you talking about like population control kind of so type of something? I, I, I just I think that they are possibly injecting something in the medical marijuana, and you're not. Well, you're not buying it from the government. I'm saying it's government regulated. Right. And I mean, come on, the government they're gonna have a, a hand a say so in a lot of well, I mean, marijuana. Well, yeah, but all the corn is subsidized. I mean, are they putting pollutants in the ethanol that's going in our cars and we're driving around, we're polluting well, ourselves? Well, the thing about, this, some kind the of thing about this is I, I'm, I I'm specifically looking at young African Americans who smoke marijuana or possibly young people. I'm trying to, they're going to smoke on a lot. Right. Mm-hmm. If you have a medical condition, maybe in your older, may take a little less prescribed. I'm talking about the people that are just going to Colorado, like, hey, how many grams can I get this week? That's what I'm talking about. Do you guys have any um, thing to say, uh, Catherine or Rome, regarding what you think? Is Rome still in? Rome, you still in? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, you're, you're, that's good. Yeah. That's correct. I, I agree. And because it's all about money. When everybody starts looking at money, they start uh, taking shortcuts. Because, like, I used to smoke marijuana. And I noticed when I stopped, my lips had got black. And I, once I started learning about nutrition, learning about the body, what happened was I put too much carbon dioxide into my uh, to my skin cell. Once I stopped smoking, everything reversed. My lips back pink again. So my oxygen back. And the ladies so, love pink lips, so yeah, do that. <laughs> I don't like so pink lips. What, what, like real, I will not trust the government. I will not trust Big Farmer. And I, what I do like is I agree with the lady on the show about third party testing. That is so major. Because some of the growers, you know, they get these bugs and they, when they grow it and they put these chemicals to try to kill the blood, bugs, but they don't want to lose their whole heart because that's thousands of dollars. And then you go smoke the, smoke the weed and that gets into your system and down the line it's going to cause more problems. That sounds like the, the, the roundup controversy. Exactly. Hey, Eva, Yvonne, is that, is that Jones? Um, so, you don't think that Urban, this this program is, is discriminatory or practicing discrimination? No. Well, if, if they're, if they're receiving calls and not taking them in order, what do you call that? Whether or not when and, and on what topic uh, they want to take their call. That's just me, but I'm in one room, they're in another, and you know, that's what they do. Now I can bring your concern up to them. They usually have a meeting afterwards. Yeah, no, I'm going to call and talk to DJ, I hope, uh, directly. But I just was trying to get some input because I didn't know, like, I'm, I, I assumed. You know, for example, which is a real example, you know, I've waited sometimes for an hour, sometimes longer. Um, I don't believe anybody has ever waited as long as I have in the history of WMF in such a short period of time, you know. Um, So I, I, I would consider that a form of discrimination. If I had a radio program and I said, you know, I don't really like this person's demeanor, or I don't like the way they look, or the way they sound, so I'm just going to make them wait three, four, five times longer than everyone else. Don't you think that's bordering discrimination? Do you think that's what's happening in your case? It, ha- it is happening, and it's happened for many years. Well, I don't need that. I mean, you know, I've talked to the board. They they give me a load of malarkey. Um, you know, if you walk the line, which I could do very well at, I think I would be very popular at a place like WNF if I decided to walk the line. 
But I have something that says, no, this is wrong. These are, you know, th there's, there's a form of manipulation going on. There's misconception that's being shared. I have a duty to speak out against this so that the, the public can be informed correctly. You know, that's my intention. I don't really like to waste my Sundays. My wife gets to spend time with me today and and you know she doesn't like the fact that you know I call and I you know get all worked up but the thing is is that when you have something inside you that says this is wrong acts of of, of vengeance are being perpetrated on innocent people and maybe that's harsh terms but it's, it's happening subtly just like a snake in a garden and I have a you know an obligation to say something about it does that make me a bad person What do you I, think, Yvette? I, I, I mean, from what you described, I think not. I have no idea who you are, Yvette, but I definitely feel for you because uh, I just believe in you speak. Uh, so uh, that comes in all areas, whether it's on the radio, in writing, or in person. So, um, yeah. I like you. Not because you flattered me, but because, you know, you speak truth. Very good. And I do, and again, I do apologize for not talking to um, and myself as well, and supporting to them, and, uh, and we'll see what happens, and I hope you call me next week. You know how to, to work that phone. <laughs> I still know how to work the phone. Well, I'm still learning, but, uh, <laughs> like, even to this day, when I first got on the phone, I hung up on the phone. I'm like, fuck, guys. Oh, yeah? Uh, <laughs> Well, thank you for your time. Have Same to you. Bye-bye.